thanks, Mark. And uh, I'm pleased we're still talking after all these years. Um, so, yeah, I'm John. I'm obviously John Bovel from Mons uh, Monsoon Accessorise. My um, presentation itself is going to take the form of three kind of stages to it. Um, the first stage is to um, contextualise. I should actually get the slide up, actually. The first stage is contextualise what we're doing. So, um, and I'll explain a little bit about project customer, what it means a second, because it's quite a grand title for what we're doing. Um, but a little bit is about contextualising why. So the rationale but behind it. Um, the, second, the second part of it is, is what, so um, what we're actually doing. And, and the third part of it is our approach to making this happen. Now, a couple of admissions for our stars, and this is why I need your help, actually. Um, we actually we haven't delivered it yet. Um, so what we're going to talk about in, in a moment, or, or I'll share with you in a moment, is, is work in progress. So what, what, why I'm here is partly because obviously we're working in practicology, let's, let's be blunt about it, um, but secondly actually I'm learning. So as I talk through what we're trying to achieve here, I'd really appreciate you guys just um, firing questions at me. If it's not resonating with you in any way, or if it is resonating, I hope it is, but if it's not resonating with you, please please challenge me um, because um, I, I'm learning all the time, right? So, so please, please challenge me. Um, the, the, the third part of it is, is really about collaborative collaboration. You know, I'm a real big believer in collaboration. You know, our business, I'm not quite sure about the comments earlier about products. You know, the reality is we are a fashion business. We're a product-led business. That, that, that's our, our business, right? So we, we, that, that's what we're about. Um, so, and I can't see that changing anytime soon. So I think that's just the reality of, of our commercial model. Um, we see the potential of this in the future is collaboration with people through the Internet of Things, Internet of Everything, with, with aligned-minded people, so sportswear people, holiday people, etc. So if any of you, as we talk through this, know of people who work in those industries who want to work with us at a future date around collaboration because of what we're trying to set up here, I'd be really, really interested in talking to you. So anybody in those, those areas, please come and talk to me, or others that we may not have thought about that directly impacts the Internet of Everything, Internet of Things. Okay, so about our business. Hopefully you know about Monsoon Accessorise. We're actually three brands. Um, there's Monsoon Children's, Monsoon Ladies, and Accessorise. Um, the business as a whole, including our foreign subsidiaries, and that includes franchise uh, partners, we turn over a ballpark about a billion pounds sterling, roughly. Yeah, that's 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 kind of globally. Um, when you say global for us, that's about 70 countries, obviously including UK within that. So just to be absolutely clear, the UK is is our biggest market by quite a distance. However, Middle East is in, is very important to us as a business. Um, give you an idea of scale of each of our brands. The largest brand from a turnover perspective and a store estate perspective is is accessorised, and I will continue continue to talk about store estates. The reality is we do about 22% of our sales online in the Monsoon brand. So the reality is stores are very, very important to our business and will continue to be important to our business. So store estate wise, the biggest um, brand is, is by far Accessorize. Accessorize turns over about £600 million sterling. Um, they trade in the bulk of those 70 countries. About 60% of the Accessorize turnover comes from the international business. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a big international business. Um, Monsoon Children's turns over, you know, relatively small part of the business, but still a very important part of the business, and actually the biggest growth area of our business on a light-for-light -light basis anyway. Monsoon Children's, turns out about 120, 150 uh, million roughly. Uh, about 50% of that business is, is, is international. So when you talk to people outside of UK, I'm sure there's people here outside of UK, generally they know our business is accessorised on Monsoon Children's, particularly in the Middle Eastern markets and the European markets, yeah, so they have a fairly significant um, presence. Um, and then there's ladies. Ladies is really what most people associate us with in the UK. Um, is the relatively small part of our business, really. It's about £250 million um, turnover, and about 20% of that business, roughly, is, 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 is international. Yeah, so only about 20% of the business. Um, ladies uh, is been in existence now for... Peter, actually, will, I'm going to go mental for getting this. Uh, it's, what, what is it? Christ, I should know this. Sorry to swear. I do swear a lot. It's about 30-odd years, I think. Um, and No, 40 years. Sorry, 42 years. Um, Monsoon is about 30 years, and uh, Children's about 21 years now. Yeah, um, All brand built, all built by Peter, founder of our business, and still by far the largest shareholder in the business, pretty much 100%. Now, last thing before I move on um, is reward. We have a reward card, points-based system. You spend um, 150 quid, you get 10 quid back. Um, 
pretty big, UK only, um, so just, just to clarify this point, and when we go on to the work we're doing on Project Customer, it is predominantly UK based, so just be clear about that before we start. Um, it's 3.3 million UK customers, it's not small. Um, penetration wise, about 38% on and offline, it is both on and offline for both our brands. Pretty big, um, when you look at the big, you know, the bigger players in this sphere, I mean some of you guys will know better than me, the Nectars, Tesco, etc., you know, they'd be pretty happy with those sorts of penetration rates, it's pretty good, you know, so we're really quite proud of our, our gem, you know, the jewel in the crown, which is that reward card. And that is pretty critical when you go into what we're going to be achieving with Project Customer. Yeah, so let me talk about that now. Context of it. Um, now, it's all good to talk about theory, so what? Yeah, so, but let me try and bring this alive a bit. Um, and I'll talk from here because the mic. Um, so the early e-commerce days, this is the first time I met Mark, um, was his, his early e-commerce. <laughs> And what Mark, he undersold himself a bit, I would say, uh, but it's easy for me to say with this, Mark. But what, what we did at Aurora is interesting, because when we went live with e-commerce, I think we slightly leapt it into phase two from the early days, because what we saw as e-commerce being, when you have stores, this is, so just to clarify this point, uh, Aurora Fashions is, uh, at that point, was Oasis Coast, Cameron and Whistles, had a big store estate, as well as, um, well, at that point, no e-commerce presence. Um, so we were starting with the store estate product push model. Um, we saw early doors. There's no point building a separate, completely separate siloed e-commerce operation. You've got to integrate it into your core business. You've got to integrate it. What does that mean? Single stop being the most critical one. So we knew from day one <laughs> we were always going to go down a single stop route yeah, and self and allocation route. We knew that from day one. Um, Technology-wise, open source, no debate. Yeah, so, so we knew that. The reason why we went down the open source route, you make loads of mistakes along the way. If you go down the open source route, it's far cheaper, far quicker to get out of those holes if you can. Yeah? So they went down the open source route and number one, uh, number two, sorry, single stop was the first one. And then thirdly, probably more importantly, um, is culture. Um, we, where we had uh, traders, your merchandisers, your marketers, etc. we did not set up a separate e-commerce division. We put all of those sitting within the brands. Effectively, the brands for us in that business was anybody that touched the customer. Yeah, and that sat in the brands. It did not sit in a central siloed operation. It's all integrated. Yeah, um, so that was good. So that was an, a nice model. And so we quickly got into that kind of phase two. That was all about seamless, consistent, and positive um, experience for our customers. Yeah, hopefully that resonates with all of you. If it doesn't, challenge me, please. Because if I'm talking absolute nonsense, just just challenge me as I go along. Now we're going into this next phase, and we saw this at the time. So we always had this question in our head, and I, I'm not sure if I debated this with you, Mark, or with your raw guys. I can't remember. But we always said that it's, an, it's a given around the multi-channel model. That's an absolute. If you not, you don't want to cannibalize your core business, you don't want to cannibalize your customer, you've got to have a multi-channel operation. It absolutely makes absolute sense. But then you logically you think, when you grow scale um, in your business, at that point, and I think it's still the case, and again, if you disagree with this, please say, if you want <coughs> intelligence about your customer, you speak to your good store managers, right? They can give you the best intelligence with the customer, ideally, but you speak to your store managers. When 20, 30, 40, 50% of your customers is touching your brand, online before they come into your physical presence, what does that do for your business model? Yeah? The, logically, the only way you can respond to that appropriately to make sure your customer is getting a decent experience from your brand is to go into that phase three. Yeah? And once you get to that scale, you move into your phase three. And at 22% of your turnover, you've got to say it's logical that you're at that phase. Yeah, you're at that phase. That's people physically buying on the website, let alone the people browsing before they even go, on, go into your stores or, or, or convert onto your websites. So that's where we are in this unification of data. And that's what Project Customer is about. We're unifying our data. And whether it's customer metrics or not, I, I debate that point slightly. But it's basically about the unification of your data. Yeah, so trying to get that joined up view. And then we're going to go eventually into phase four connected enterprise. And I do personally think that's the internet of things, internet of everything. That's your tipping point. And that one really does start impacting your value chain, which I'll come on to in a moment. OK, how does that resonate with everybody in the room? Does it? Yeah. 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 I, I hate this <coughs> statement, big data. I think it's absolutely nonsense. Uh, uh, it's crap, right? What, what this is about is a cultural change in our business, which is the same when we put in the multi-channel business. It's all about the cultural change. We're going to come on to again a bit later. OK, so moving on. Prediction. This is about the Internet of Everything, Internet of Things. So I talked about multi-channel. That's kind of joining the dots. Omni-channel is this is your... Um, uh, you're, you're bringing your data together, unifying your data. as a data-driven strategy, and this is me, my, me talking here. And then very quickly, obviously, we're going into the Internet of Things, Internet of Everything, yeah? So you're probably thinking, I'm a coming from a fashion industry, right? Wearing a dodgy jacket and everything else, right? So what, 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 why are we talking about Internet of Things? How can it possibly impact a fashion business? 
an obvious one is our reward card. Yeah, so, so it's here now, right? So, so with a reward card, with a loyalty program, of course you're having the impact of internet of things. It is happening now. It's joining up those dots, being able to respond to your customer as a brand, from a service proposition, how you're interacting with them on the websites, how you're interacting with marketing, et cetera, right? So products, et cetera. So it's, it's already happening, yeah? But think about another way. So I don't know how many of you have got a pedometer, whatever you're using to monitor your health. Um, I've noticed this with my wife, and if, again, this doesn't resonate with you, please say. I noticed as soon as she started following her footsteps, yeah, and, and monitoring her heart rate, and monitoring her calorie intake, which I'm sure you're all doing, we're all doing this, right? She started walking a lot more, okay? So she started walking a lot more, so that's interesting, okay? So started walking a lot more, suddenly started wearing different shoes, yeah? Okay, that's quite interesting. And then suddenly she started um, buying, instead of having a handbag, which obviously ruins your posture and, and you can't use your hands, um, she wore, say, a handbag with straps, a backpack, yeah? Not surprisingly, we looked at our website searches, suddenly backpack searches came up a lot more. And suddenly backpacks are becoming, obviously, a very big part of our handbag mix. For accessorise, it's quite important, because bags are a very, very big percentage of our sales mix in the accessorised business, yeah? So the Internet of Things is already impacting us, yeah? Think about the home, the connected home. So how's the connected home impacting us as a retailer? Quite simply, loungewear. Yeah, you can see it happening. There's a lot of specialist retailers coming to market offering loungewear. We're seeing our loungewear sales go up. Why? Now, I don't actually know the answer. Hopefully, we're, where we're going in the future will tell us these answers. I suspect it's because consumption of media, Netflix, etc. we're controlling how we consume media. We can plan better how we control that media. We can pair our lifestyle around how we consume that media. No surprising loungewear sales are going up, right? It's entirely logical if you think about it. Think about the connected car in the future, what the possibilities are there. So if people are saying to you, Internet of Everything, Internet of Things is not impacting you now, they're talking absolute bloody nonsense, right? So you've got to get your business ready for it. And in our view, you've got to unify your data. That's the only way you can respond appropriately in your business. But more importantly, the real trick is orientate your culture around how you can really make use of that data, make intelligent use of that data and drive competitive advantage and get a better experience for your customer. Do you understand the context of what we're trying to do? Okay, good. So next, what's our response? This is our response. So it's a bit like, I equate it again, going back to days of, of working with Mark on multi-channel. I try to refer to Mark a lot. It's partly because it's, it's, it's practicality, but it's about relationships in life. But there's one way of doing it, saying you've got your reward database sitting over here. You kind of use that, kind of what we were talking about earlier, to extract some data. I'm not sure that's right, right? So what we're saying is you can't do that. You've got to link it to your sales and stock data. You've got to have a holistic view of your data. You can't have your customer data sitting over here on your sales and stock data. Otherwise, how are you empowering your organization, the people in your business, including your customers, because I think there is a way here that you could be completely transparent to your customers as well. How are you going to get that total view of your business? Yeah? So our, what we're doing here is something slightly different to what other people are doing. We're building a database that incorporates a lot. Yeah? So it's your sales and stock data as well as your customer data. And I, again, I'm going to come back to that in a minute, the type of data we're looking at in a minute. And that's effectively what this vision is about. Right? It's about delivering that, the whole thing. Yeah? Um, all internet enabled, it has to be. You know, you're mobile, we're all mobile, she's mobile. Right? How can it not be? How can you give your workforce at all that isn't mobile? Right? It's crazy. So that's obviously a given. It's got to be internet enabled. The only other thing I will just briefly mention before I go on to what solutions you're working on is compliance. Don't forget compliance, data protection rules. Pretty bit of a hot topic because it's EU related. Um, so God knows in reality whether it's how it's going to be diluted over time. But the reality is data protection rules are only going to go in one direction. Okay? If you don't unify your data in some form as an organization, you're not getting yourself ready for these data protection rules. And I think it's completely appropriate, actually. I think as a customer, you've got a right to say to an organization, look, you delete me from your records. Right? I, I don't have a problem with that as a customer. Why is an organization if you have a problem with that? We've got to gear up our data ready for it. So don't, don't ignore those rules coming in in 2018. I think they will come in some form of relevant what happens with Brexit. Okay? Does that make sense about the vision? Everybody happy with that for now? Any questions on that? Do you think it's not raving mad or does it make sense generally? Mm -hmm. uh, all fairly resonant. Yeah, sorry, question. Yeah. question about the acquisition part. Yeah. Say we use the market expanded over such as Google. Yeah. Is the market expanded over such as Google? Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, so this is why we're interested in collaboration. So if we're working with a, a, let's go back to Internet of Everything, right, Internet of Things. So if we work with sports, uh, let's say a holiday company, right, a big part of the access, go back to, well, same with Monsoon, a big part of our business is obviously beachwear, right? If we can work with holiday companies and we can work with a company, we've got this rich data, we can look at predictive data on our customers um, and we can see with those customers what their particular activity is. Holiday companies obviously know about that as well. If we can work together, we can provide targeted marketing, ser marketing services to customer groups. Yeah? Always got to be careful data protection, trust the customer. Yeah? But ultimately, what that means is you can cut out the middleman. Yeah? 
So that's what we see as a potential opportunity. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I do think it is worth kind of highlighting what you're saying, John, about the, the ambition of the vision here, I think, is materially different from most other uh, retailers that uh, we talk to. Um, we've spoken a lot this morning about the single customer view and the importance of it, and I would completely agree with that. Um, but I think it is fair to say most people's um, conception of the single customer view is just about customer data and that might make total sense. We want to understand everything about customer in, in, in interactions and all the rest of it. What, you're, uh, what you've set up in motion here at Monsoon is a, is a much wider canvas and it's about bringing in all the enterprise data, yeah. uh, products, purchase orders, um, logistics, um, staff turnover in store, all these different elements to be able to join the whole thing up and, and, uh, and as you've said, it's as much a a cultural business change project, it is, it uh, is, and actually, actually, that's what it is. The technology is just en enabling it, which I know yeah. is a, it's a cliche these days, but yeah, yeah absolutely. Because when we come on to that, the cultural bit, that is the big, big challenge. It's a massive challenge. It's huge. Uh, so this one, I'm not going to dwell on too much. You know all about this stuff, right? So the single stock view is a given. We talked about that enough. Single customer view, we've, 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 you know, obviously we're talking about that. That's about seeing it through the eyes of customers. Personalization, I completely agree about anticipatory, predictive data, that, that is, is the, the battleground of the future. And then lastly, the way we see a store, a store for us is, is it's, it's a touch point for a customer, okay? So it's not necessarily a physical store. Um, we see it as a very simply a browser-based, web-based point of stores and completely device agnostic. You know, customer self-checkout, you can have assisted sale, you can have tills. You fi fixed till points are not going anywhere. A customer needs a destination to convert in store, right? So I don't see fixed tills themselves going anywhere, but they certainly will be fixed and mobile. As you're probably aware, we've done a lot of work on assisted sale mobiles in our business. So it's across 114 stores in the UK. self location, obviously, if it's available, you get it to it. It's simple. Then there is obviously marketplaces and, and concessions. We are in relatively narrow product offer. So effectively, if we want to grow our business, you've got no choice really but to play in those spaces, which we are. Okay. That, again, I hope that makes sense. It's fairly common in most businesses. Now, these are solutions. Sorry, this is quite a small slide. I'm conscious of time, so I will, and I'm going to move on to cultural bit in a moment. Um, but it's worth just dwelling on this slightly. This, these are the solutions we're working um, with. Um, now, Again, when we first looked at um, uh, uh, multi-channel, whenever it was, all those time ago, e-commerce, um, we had to look for talent outside of our sector, so not in fashion when I say outside of our sector. So we looked at um, electronics and travel, didn't we? So we, in, we brought a guy on board called Julian Shirley, who's from Tui Travel, because there wasn't that level of experience in the fashion field at the time. We've done the same with these platforms, actually, because we, we just couldn't find, I'm sorry, I know there's vendors in the room, so apologies if you've got these tools, but we just couldn't find anything there that was fit for purpose, to be honest. So we looked at a tool called Exosol, um, and King Gaming use it, it's Candy Crush. Um, they use this, and we thought, look, you know, this, this is fit for purpose. This is a cloud-based tool, based in Germany, in Nuremberg, really, really good tool, right? So that's our data warehouse, yeah? Talend, you probably know, that's our middleware. Everybody probably knows Talend. Um, and then we're using, on the kind of analytics insight piece, we're using Alteryx and Tableau. Now, we're not wedded to those tools. They're the tools we're going to go live with. We're, going, we're aiming to go live this year, this calendar year with these tools. Um, in the future, we can slot in wherever we want on that side, to be honest. Um, but the Exosol and Talend side is, all, is, 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 is the data warehouse and the middleware piece, okay? Really good tool these I and mean, we're quite excited about them. Now, the solution. So the seamless customer experience across all channels, as we talked about that enough. And um, the other thing that would deliver is, is the, the customer insight piece, which again we talked about a fair bit. Single version of the truth, don't underestimate that one please. Um, that, that's going to be quite important. So we're getting rid of all our reporting systems, putting them all onto this, including our financial reporting system sector onto here. And then bottom left is about operational efficiency. Now Will touched upon this. Um, when you, we were looking at this maybe 10 years ago, we just didn't have the processing power to do this. Yeah? In the last two years, it's moved on massively. You know, these Exosol tools just weren't around. They are now there. We can run all all of this, we're going to run it on a revenue basis for cheaper than we're running our current tools. So we're going to run all of this cheaper. Yeah, We're not live yet. So it's marginally cheaper, maybe marginally more, but it ain't going to be a lot more than we're running it for now. Yeah, So the process of power of this and it's now affordable. So don't be afraid now to play, Yeah, because these tools are now there. They're, they're available to you yeah? and they're all cloud-based. Yeah? So the cost of going into this, the risk of going into this area, I would say has become much less than it ever was. You don't have to invest in these huge enterprise tools anymore. They are there for you. Okay? Um, so lower IT support costs, lower business risk, because obviously this technology has moved on, and then the platform is extendable. You know, we can slot in GA, Omniture, Callmetrics, whatever you want onto, this, onto the Alteryx Tableau end in the future. Okay? Make sense? 
Right, now the cultural change. So these are the kind of customer data types which you can pull in. Some of them we're bringing in, some of them we're not, day one, but this is where we see the future being, okay? These slides are available to all of you, so you know, please you know, digest in your own time. Now, I'm conscious of time, it's got five minutes. Um, so the cultural change is the big change, right? So there's, there's, two way, there's three ways of approaching this, and we've discussed all three, and we decided to go down the hardest route, so, which is entirely logical. So the first way is you can get, give it to a third party, yeah? As a kind of, to shake out in your business, change your business approach and then bring it in-house at a later date. We felt that was not the right thing to do. I'm probably rude at saying this because I probably uh, wish we did eventually. No, but honestly, I don't think that is the wrong decision. Um, but um, the, the reason why we didn't do that is it's our data, right? So why in hell would you give that competence to somebody else, right? So logically, that was never going to be an option for us. The other one is you go down another model where you create a centre of expertise in your business. Probably the less painful one again. Um, but again, we feel that well, you're not going to achieve anything with that. The reality is businesses have to become more insight-based. The competence of insight in your business is, is, is just a given in the future, okay? So we felt, again, easier route, but not the right route for us. So what we've decided to do is change the culture of our business. So we've said, look, across our business, let's look at the talent within our business and let's adopt an approach called design thinking. Now, I don't know if anybody uses design thinking at the moment. Yeah, okay, good. So what's your, pro what's your feeling um, on we, it? We use it a lot. Good, yeah. Customers that use it term. Good, okay. Using yeah, good, okay. Well, How did you find it? Did you... Um, yeah, I think as long as you've got a sort of a fairly clear sort of objective of what you're trying to achieve, then it does open up a lot of um, ideas. And then after a while, people start to relax and actually start to collaborate and actually get quite a lot out of that. Yeah, good. Yeah. And collaboration is right, a really good word here. Yeah. Any other observations on design things? Sorry, yes, gentlemen. Often here. you get to understand how well your business is, is aligned. Yeah. Um, because sometimes you know, areas of the business believe that they know what other areas are doing, but it's a great chance to hash that out. Yeah. Good. So that's a really good point again. Yeah. And sorry, there's one other. Per anybody else want to comment? Is use design thinking? No. Is everybody? So, so design thinking is, is effectively th this process here that you go through. Is, is these points? Are, so thank you for sharing your inputs. That's really that's what we're finding with it already. We've been adopting this now for about three months, or maybe four months. Um, and you get empathy across the business around a particular, and I'll, talk to, and I'll show you in a minute the hypotheses we're working on as a business. And then you, you define what, 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 what it is, then you ideate it, then you prototype it, and then you test it. So where we're going before, yeah, this is very quick, relatively rapid um, process you go through. Three months not that rapid, but it's a relatively quick process you go through to prototype and test it. Now the reason why it's taking a bit longer for us is because we haven't got the solutions yet. Once you get the solutions in place, obviously this process will be a lot sh uh, uh, shorter. And it's a way of visualising. You know, data. Most people who mention the word data, they get pretty scared by it for whatever reason. God knows why, because most people can't make sense of it anyway. So why be scared? You know, work across your organisation, pull the skills you've got in your organisation, the best skills you've got in the organisation, focus on a problem, focus on the idea first, and then use your organisation resource ahead of you to solve that problem using the data sets you've got. And that's effectively the process we're stepping through. So it's gentlemen in the glasses. Yeah. Just, uh, my experience of all this is that, like structured brainstorming. Yep. Up with lots of new ideas, yep. which is the best thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and you know, there can be big, small ideas, and don't be afraid to fail. It's the same point we made about e-commerce open source. You know, we know that some of the hypotheses we've come up with, there's five of them at the moment. Some will wash, some of them won't. Okay, so I'll talk about those in a moment. Yeah. Everybody clear on this process? Right. So the, how does it work? Effectively, there's, there's these three processes. There's the, the democratization, the kind of, I hate this term, but blue sky thinking. So it's an open form. Don't be scared. Come up with these big ideas, right? Come up with these big questions. What do we really want these, this, this data we've got? How do we want them to provide really decent, improved customer experience? Or problems that have always been in our business. How do we really solve those problems? Yeah, what are they? Yeah? And that's democratization blues. And that's the collaboration bit. Bringing together these people, like-minded empathy. Yeah? You've got empathy on specific problems bring these individuals together then proactive prescriptive analytics so obviously that's even critical right so you look at the analytics you're constantly kind of road testing that hypotheses and then lastly you automate it and this is the process we go to once we get the relevant tools in place yes yeah? so that's where you get your productivity gain make sense everyone? okay I wish through this I'm conscious I've got a couple of minutes now the approach is about changing the culture and this is not an uncommon uh, thread but over investing your culture you know in my time I'm spending a mass of my time on this right trying to work with the organization to make sure we orientate ourselves around this approach and what in hell we're going to do these data sets once we get them live for the latter part of this year okay and that's where I'm spending all of my time and it's I would say it's probably higher than 75 it's probably more like 85 90 percent of my time you know, on this particular area 
Yeah? Integrated team. So what we've done is there's three types. And again, if you've got different experience of this, there's three types of skill sets you have. Um, there's what we call the... These, I'm not too sure about these terms. I think we're going to change them. But the first one is about hypothesis development. That's just sort of kind of a bit of your ideas type person. You know, some of you out there, probably more creative types. I hate that term again. But you're probably more of, of that leaning. Then you've got your data wrangler, and that's your analytics. So any of the guys who ask questions about data earlier have probably got the leaning towards this area. You're kind of your data wranglers. And then lastly, the, 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 this bottom area, the analysis and, and what you call it, visualization, that's your storyteller. So that's the one who can relay it back to the business and say, actually, look at these data sets. This is really what it's telling us. And actually, these are the outcomes and, and actions we need to take. Right. So these are the three kind of skill sets you're looking for. So what we did in our business, we took about 50 people, 45 people in our business. We included third parties, so Mark's on the team, Mark from Practicology on the team, other suppliers are on the team. We've used a not-for-profits organisation, um, British Red Cross are actually on, on the team because we want a not-for-profits idea coming through to our business. So different people, they're part of these um, visual, uh, these design thinking groups. And what we've done is we've looked at individuals and said, look, we think you've got a high propensity to be this kind of, uh, this, 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 this area, right? You're coming from the ideas. Another person, we think you've got high propensity to be this analyst. Another person, you think a higher propensity to be a storyteller. So you've looked at those particular skill types, we've deliberately mixed up the teams, right? So we've got those three skill types, balanced skill types in the teams, taking a third party expertise, we're going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons a bit and challenge the norm in our business, yeah? To really take us out of our comfort zones, yeah? And that's the groups. And the groups have come up with these five questions. I won't read them out to you, you're going to get them, but they're, they're the five hypotheses, yeah? Two more slides. Oh, actually, this is my last slide, I'm bang on time, right? And so what this will all become, this is what we're hoping it will become, right? So this is where we are today, so we're on this whiteboard here. So that's the team that looks at start and reduce satisfaction and customer profit. I don't know if either of you marks on that team. It'd be interesting to get the perspective if you are. And where we want to go to, we haven't actually created that data here, so it's going to be a truncated version of that Hayes and That's from some American university. But we've actually bought this big, lovely touch screen. We've got this big collaborative area in our business. We're hopefully going to get one of these in each of the floors in our, in our business. And what we're going to be doing is actually starting to create these hypotheses on a live Tableau outtrix based system. So these guys who are doing this design thinking can start showing it across the organization. Yeah? Now, what we're hoping will come of this is this will be the drip. So of these five hypotheses, maybe two, three hypotheses, lovely if it's all five, we'll actually gain traction in our business, get our founder to note um, what it's delivering for our business. Once we get some success behind it, what we're hoping that will change the culture of our business and that, will trip, that drip will come the lake. Yeah? And that lake will be how we organise the whole, cult culturally restructure our business around the data yeah? and around approaching data in the design thinking way from a cultural perspective. Does that make sense? Yeah? It's a big change, we're not there yet, it's work in progress, right? But we're hoping to get to this point around about September, October this year. That's our target.